Hello everybody, this is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming News with Paul and Adrian. This is March the 24th, 2024. I want to welcome you to our daily news update here. Uh, a lot has been going on in the last 24 hours, but before we get going, I do want to welcome everyone to our channel. If this is your first time here, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you will not miss any of our breaking news updates. There are so many things going on. You need to be updated on a regular basis. So again, thank you for showing up today, watching our videos. Uh, this is a picture of Dmitry Medvedev, uh, probably the second um, highest ranking official in Russia. He had some strong words to say about the, um, uh, the terror attacks in Moscow. But uh, we're going to get to all that information. But before we do, I just want to show you guys, we have a lot of new subscribers. I want to show you our main channel. This is on Rumble. So all of you new guys that have just uh, joined our channel on YouTube, this is our main news channel on Rumble, Off Grid Desert Farming News with Paul and Adrian. This is where all of our news broadcasts go. Um, we do a lot of controversial uh, videos and that we cannot post on YouTube so we post those videos over here on Rumble we have over 400 videos on our Rumble channel so if you have time we will leave the link uh, in the description box um, please check out our Rumble channel like I said this is our uh, our main news channel because um, uh, we can't post a lot of uh, sensitive information on YouTube so let's go ahead and get to the news We'll start off with uh, Dmitry Medvedev and what he had to say just a, um, a few hours ago. He said, there is no salvation for anyone involved regardless of origin or position. Uh, Ex-Russian president uh, follows up on those responsible for Moscow carnage after uh, the death message. So, He's uh, putting out some very strong words that all the people that contributed to this terrorist attack in Moscow on Saturday will be held accountable. They will be hunted down and will be dealt with uh, accordingly. So let's go ahead and read this. Uh, continuation after the message of death for terrorists who caused the carnage was given today by the vice chairman of the National Council of Russia and former president of the country, Dmitry Medvedev, as he now openly promised revenge against those involved in the attack, regardless of origin and country. And for the victims of the massacre, he wished them the kingdom of heaven. More specifically today, in a message on social networks, Medvedev stated, we will take revenge for everyone and there will be no salvation for anyone involved, regardless of origin or and position. This is our main goal. So uh, this is the message from uh, uh, Medvedev. Uh, he is pretty much uh, President Vladimir Putin's spokesperson uh, for the Kremlin. If you want to know what Russia is going to do, then uh, Medvedev is the guy to go to. So uh, the retaliation strikes have begun for the terror attack. They happen uh, about four or five hours ago, maybe a little bit sooner. But Russia now has begun uh, sending wave after wave after wave of strikes on Kiev and other targets in Ukraine. Retaliation has begun. Terrifying strike in Kiev by Russian missile attacks. Swarms of Russian bombers are launching missile strikes in Lviv as well. So this is a picture of one of the Russia's Tu-95 strategic bombers which can hold a variety of missiles uh they are uh, going in wave after wave it says the carnage in moscow and the arrest of the ukrainian uh the perpetrators who tried to escape to the ukrainian border could not let russia's reaction not be terrifying and have in the foreground retaliatory strikes first against administrative centers and the mercenary facilities stationed by advisors in ukraine there are already reports of a new wave of bombing as Ukrainian air defense authorities have been alerted that 12 Tu-95s are in the air headed for the uh, headed um, for the uh, Ukrainian capital. 12 Tu-95 strategic bombers took off again headed towards Ukraine 
unfortunately, another missile attack. So Russia has begun their revenge uh, strikes on Kiev and other locations. Uh, it says, in fact, the result of the morning strikes recalled the beginning of the American shock and awe strikes in Iraq, with the result that many media outlets published video of the bombings of Baghdad from that time. So this is beginning, folks. We don't know how long this is going to last, uh, but I'm sure that Russia will continue uh, these strikes on Kiev in the coming days. This will not be uh, the last strike. We do have conflicting reports coming out of Washington and NATO. NATO and Washington, D.C. and Ukraine are still uh, denying any involvement in this terrorist attack in the Crocus uh, music venue. Uh, in downtown Moscow. They are uh, distancing themselves uh, from this attack. Uh, John Kirby made a speech uh, stating uh, that he wishes Russia condolences for the losses, and he claims that America and our CIA and our agencies has no part in this. But folks, listen, uh, you guys watching our channel, you are not ignorant. You are not stupid. Uh, who else uh, is supporting Ukraine, folks. NATO and in the United States and the European countries are supporting Ukraine. Uh, these 11 uh, terrorists that were arrested, four of them were the actual shooters, uh, they were headed toward Ukraine. There was some kind of state actor involved to organize this complicated attack to smuggle these people into the country of Russia to make sure uh, that they had all the weapons they needed. They had maps. Uh, they had everything stashed before this attack happened. And uh, you're not going to do that if you're just four straight terrorists from ISIS uh, just uh, mulling around, oh, uh, we're just going to attack Russia today. It doesn't work like that, folks. This takes months of planning, very intense uh, communications between different uh, people, uh, planning organizations, scouting locations. Uh, this was not just some random attack by some Islamic extremist group. So uh, for our country to say that we have no involvement, uh, that has not been proven yet. Uh, we did a video last night, and I do want to thank uh, Steve Quell for sharing our video out on his uh, website. Thank you, uh, Steve Quell. We appreciate that. But... Um, this information, uh, we, we have conflicting reports. We have uh, Vladimir Zelensky uh, in, uh, in Ukraine uh, uh, doing a hate-filled message against Putin, uh, blaming Russia for the, uh, their own attack, killing their own citizens. So we have uh, accusations going back and forth uh, between Russia, between Ukraine, uh, and all the actors involved. But the truth is, folks, this is the truth, that these four terrorists were caught uh, about 300 kilometers from the border of Ukraine. They were making their escape through Ukraine. So there had to be some kind of Ukrainian involvement to uh, facilitate their escape uh, from the Russian authorities. And Kiev and Zelensky uh, and our State Department, they can deny any involvement they want. But folks, you're not stupid. Uh, we are the main supplier of weapons, intelligence, uh, coordination. Uh, Ukraine could do nothing in Russia. They could do nothing in Ukraine without our help. We are constantly flying our surveillance drones over the Black Sea, over the Sea of Avolf, uh, around Crimea. We're constantly surveying the, uh, the battlefield and giving those coordinates and information to Ukrainian military authorities. Uh, without the help of the United States and NATO and our satellite technology, they could not launch these attacks uh, deep inside Russia on their oil facilities. Uh, they could not launch attacks on Crimea. They could not launch attacks uh, on the warships, folks. So uh, whether we want to deny it or not, we are involved. And so is the United Kingdom. And it is uh, funny that uh, Barack Obama, a uh, former president of the United States, made uh, a kind of a secretive mission uh, just a few days before this happened to 10 Downing Street and met the prime minister of the UK. Is Obama still involved? Is Victoria Nuland uh, still involved now? She announced her retirement a couple days ago. 
Actually, actually it's been over a week. Victoria Newland was the architect of the overthrow of the legitimate government of Ukraine in 2014. Everybody wants to forget that. How this war actually started, folks, it was facilitated by Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State, Joe Biden, and Victoria Nuland, uh, with the help of the CIA. We organized the Maidan coup in 2014 and started the ball rolling. We armed Ukraine to the teeth for eight years, prepared them for battle with Russia, and that is exactly what happened so we have had a long involvement. In fact, the CIA, uh, there's information that we actively have uh, at least 12 uh, secret CIA locations throughout Ukraine on the border with Russia. So folks, our agencies are involved, whether we want to admit it or not. Ukraine could do nothing without uh, U.S. Uh, intelligence agencies and, and NATO intelligence agencies assisting them uh, in this war against Russia. So, you know... Um, it, it, uh, it remains to be seen whether Russia will present evidence before the world, whether Putin will get on TV and make a speech and outline all the evidence, or will this be just like a question, did they do it? Who did it? Uh, our country and NATO was saying that ISIS did it. Russia is vehemently denying that ISIS had any uh, any involvement in this attack. So folks, uh, we won't uh, know until the evidence comes out. And will it ever come out, folks? We really don't know. So we, we are posting videos. Uh, if all uh, people want to question my sources, all the source information, we put uh, in the description box under the video. If you think I'm doing fake news, well, check out the source information. Folks, before you leave a nasty comment, please check out our sources. Uh, we leave all of the uh, links uh, to the videos and the information that we discuss in our description box. So let's keep on going. Um, a lot of news uh, to get to. Uh, Ukraine did strike two Russian warships uh, this morning. Uh, Ukraine, with the help of NATO and the United States, launched a massive strike against the um, amphibious ships, the Yarmal and Azov. And they were hit in Servostopol, and we don't know if they were sunk, but uh, these are Russia's two large landing ships. And this is a picture of one of the ships. Uh, Ukraine, with the help of NATO and the uh, European Union, has managed to sink almost all of Russia's large amphibious assault landing ships. So two more were taken out of service this morning. The Ukrainian Armed Forces announced today, Sunday, that they hit the two Russian ships, the Yarmel and Azov in Servostopol, revealing that these vessels were actually the target of a massive attack by Su-24 Storm Shadow Scalp Communication Missiles. The fear of Odessa, or rather the fear that the Russian forces will at the right moment attempt amphibious actions against the strategic port in Ukraine, has created an obsession in the Ukrainian staff that prefers to target and use up the strategic stockpile of Western anti-amphibious cruise missiles rather than one combat boats. It is characteristic that a total of seven, seven of the 13 large amphibious ships of the Russian Black Sea Fleet have been damaged or destroyed. The Ukrainian Armed Forces managed to hit the amphibious ships, the Yamal, and Azov, as well as communication centers and other infrastructure of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. The Ukrainian Armed Forces Communication Center said in a statement, uh, the Russian appointed governor of Sevastopol, Mikhail Rezol, uh, I can't pronounce the name, Razvol Zev, uh, announced uh, a major Ukrainian offensive overnight and noted that Russian air defenses shot down more than 10 missiles. So this is breaking news. You know, we have so much breaking news that this story alone would be headline news uh, on any other day. But with so much breaking news coming in, this is just one of many. So Ukraine did manage to destroy or sink two more of Russia's flagships, uh, uh, assault landing heavy ships, uh, this morning, the Yamal and the Azov. So this is just more uh, news coming in. Let's uh, get you some more updates on the Russian cruise missile attack. 
Uh, Russian missiles crossed Poland border during the attack. Uh, it seems like a few of uh, the Russian missiles did cross into uh, NATO territory in Poland right on the uh, edge of Ukraine uh, with this missile attack. As of 11.53 p.m. Eastern U.S. time on Saturday night into Sunday, Russia is engaged in a large missile attack against Ukraine. However, at least three Russian missiles breached Poland's airspace over the village of Horodit, uh, right here, Herodit, and Poland has scrambled the fighter jets. So um, I guess this is the area right here in question where the uh, Russian missiles flew over. At least seven Tu-95 bombers took off from the uh, Olenya airfield in Russia to launch long-range missiles at Ukraine. Bombers also took off from Ingalls with a total of 13 of the Tu-95 MS bombers in the air. This airfield is located just 100 kilometers from the Norway border in the far north. Uh, north. Uh, six more Su-34 bombers are now airborne. Large explosions in Lviv. Second missile volley are inbound. Missiles are headed toward Kiev. All of Ukraine is now under a rare uh, air raid alert. So uh, this is a map of Ukraine. So Russia is starting to hit different locations in Ukraine. It says missiles have overflown uh, or sold though Poland, which is about 70 kilometers um, south of Horato, Poland, previously overflown. Multiple KH-105-555-55 missiles on direct course to Kiev from the north. Massive explosions in Kiev in the city center is under intense bombardment right now. At least 19 explosions in uh, Starik, I guess, uh, how you pronounce that. Folks, I do not speak Ukrainian, so forgive me if I mispronounce some of these names. Uh, so let's keep on going. Uh, it says, updated Sunday morning, several Russian missiles flew into Polish airspace during a 40-second maneuver as they flew to the city of Stariv Lviv, uh, on Ukraine. So this is uh, some of the latest breaking news. Uh, Russia has, like I said, begun uh, the pounding of uh, these different locations. Uh, this is just more information on the sinking of the two uh, Russian warships. Uh, from uh, the front, a training center was destroyed in Lviv, the most powerful blow to Sevastopol. So this is part of the missiles fragments, I guess. So the terrorist attack in the Crocus City Hall Music Center greatly undermined the agenda, however, after this bloody action. The hands of the Russian security uh, forces are completely untied. Kiev has put itself on par with Islamic terrorists. Now society will give the authorities a carte blanche for any actions. We present the military update for Wednesday, uh, March the 21st. So this is uh, actually... Uh, I think they got the date wrong. Rear areas of Ukraine. Yesterday, March 23rd in the evening and today, on March the 24th in the morning, a massive strike was launched across Ukraine by drones and missiles. Strategic missile carriers, the Tu-95MS uh, Bear Bombers, launched cruise missiles at military facilities in Kiev and Lviv. Uh, a group of KH-101 missiles hit the capital of Ukraine there were also explosions in Nikopol and the Ivo Frankivs region uh, and other areas. Iskander uh, missiles destroyed a hangar with NATO storm shadow scalping missiles and two uh, S 200 launchers. In the Lviv region of Ukraine, about 20 missiles and seven uh, geranium strikes were counted. Local Resources write about attacks on energy facilities in the uh, Sturi area. Their missiles destroyed warehouses, bases, and most importantly, a training center with hundreds of Ukrainian nationalists, mercenaries, and Western instructors. They finished off from above with a dozen geranium drones. The first fires have not been extinguished. There are many ambulances in the impact sites. Uh, a Poland scrambled F-16 fighter jets to recover Russian missiles that flew along the Polish-Ukrainian border. So, um, 
these strikes will probably continue throughout the day. There will be probably more strikes uh, tomorrow and the next day. Um, so much news coming in, folks, but um, please stay tuned to our channel, Off Grid Desert Farming News. And like I uh, said before uh, at the beginning of this broadcast, me, please make sure that you hit uh, the subscribe button, join our channel. Uh, we do have another video I want to alert you about. This is our headline video, Emergency Alert, World War III has officially started. Uh, Dimitri, uh, I'm sorry, um, I forget the guy's name. <laughs> anyway, this is the spokesman for um, one of the uh, press secretaries for Russia, Peskov. I think his name is Dimitri Peskov. He made a, a, a statement a few days ago stating that Russia now is officially at war with NATO. This is a 33-minute a video. Please watch this video. Very, and very important information. Folks, our country is at war with Russia. Whether anybody wants to deny it or not, we are at war with Russia. That's what this whole Ukraine war is about. The United States of America and NATO is using Ukraine to fight Russia. This gives our country and NATO a carte blanche to take military action through Ukraine and then disavow any actions that it wasn't us. It wasn't us hitting Russia. We're not attacking Russia. That's Ukraine. Folks, that's like me giving my next door neighbor a whole car full load of guns and ammunition and then he goes out and commits some uh, big, huge terrorist attack and then I tell the police, well, I didn't have anything to do with it, police officer. Just because I gave him a whole car full of all these weapons, you know, I, I, it's not my responsibility what he does with it. Well, folks, we're doing the same thing with Ukraine. We're giving them the weapons. We're giving them the training. We're supporting them. Uh, we are giving them satellite information. We are coordinating the attacks. And yet we say that we're not involved. I don't know if... Uh, you know, uh, I mean, the people watching our channel, you're not that ignorant. You are very, very smart. Otherwise, you would not be watching our channel. Uh, and even a moron can figure out, folks, that uh, NATO is fighting Russia through Ukraine. So anyway, this war will probably continue a very long time until it reaches the nuclear state. And I do believe that... Uh, we could be at nuclear war at any time, or this could happen uh, by the end of the year, next year, the year after. But eventually, the war that's going on in Europe is going to lead to some kind of nuclear exchange between Russia and NATO. It's just, I mean, it's, it's just building up to that. But right now, it hasn't reached that level. So people said, well, it's not World War III because the nukes haven't dropped, folks. Well, World War III is not you just wake up one morning and nukes are flying. It has to escalate to a situation that leads to some party involved finally pushing the button. And we are getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to that every day that things are leading to an escalation that once it happens, folks, then uh, the war is going to take a totally different turn. But I do believe that NATO is preparing a decapitation strike on Putin, on his leadership. Uh, that is why NATO has been encroaching on uh, Russia's border for the last 30 years. That's why the United States and NATO sent Boris Johnson to scuttle the peace agreements in 2022. Because if there was a peace agreement and this war had been over two years ago, then none of this would be happening today there. We would be at peace. We wouldn't have to worry about nuclear war. We wouldn't have to worry about escalation. But our country did not want a peace agreement, so we sent Boris Johnson, who told Zelensky not to sign it. That is why we are one step closer to a nuclear war today than we could have been. And that is the reason I get so upset and I get so pissed off, because there could have been a peace agreement back in March of 2022. If Zelensky would have just signed the documents and declared his country a neutral country, all of these hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of Ukrainian men and women would not have died, their country would not be destroyed, and 
we could have peace right now. And Ukraine could have kept every uh, bit of their territory except Crimea and the Donbass. Uh, Russia would not be attacking right now. So anyway, this is the current situation. But folks, before we go, it is so important that you realize that your time on this earth is running out. Everybody's time is running out. And whether you die today, tomorrow, next week, next year, Judgment Day awaits all of us. And things are accelerating so quickly now on this earth that Judgment Day could be sooner than you think. So I want to give you an opportunity right now to give your life to Jesus Christ because He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is only one way to heaven, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. If you do not know him, I'm going to invite you right now, folks. We are all sinners. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there is only one person who has ever lived on this planet, the Son of God, Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Messiah, that is capable, that is able, that is qualified to forgive all of your sins. He is the only one. There is no other way to heaven. Your religion, your denomination, uh, your mother, your father, they cannot get you into heaven. It has to be a personal decision of you and you alone. You have to work out your own salvation with God yourself. So if you do not know God, if you aren't sure that if you die today, you would go to heaven and you want to make sure, don't wait another minute. If you will say this prayer and mean it in your heart, Jesus Christ will save you right now, wherever you are in the world. Just repeat this prayer. Just say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, Lord, and I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the Son of God, and I do believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood for me and that you rose again the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving all of my sins. And thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you are saved and you are born again. You are a baby Christian, but you will go to heaven if something horrible happens to you. You know, we were at Walmart uh, Friday. We were shopping at Walmart, and I noticed as we walked into Walmart, there was this gentleman uh, with a cell phone, and he looked Middle Eastern. He was bald. He had a big, thick black beard, and his cell phone, like he was taking pictures as he was walking through the doors of Walmart. So I noticed this guy uh, all throughout Walmart. It took us about an hour to go shopping, but I noticed him just walking through with his camera, uh, texting. It looked like he was taking videos or pictures for at least an hour. I mean, I would run into him. Uh, at one point, I thought he was following me. But uh, this guy was about five foot seven. He was bald headed, dark skin, a Middle Eastern look with a big, thick black beard at least 12 inches below his chin. And he did not buy anything. He had no grocery buggy. He wasn't buying anything. And once we checked out our groceries, he was sitting there uh, or standing taking more videos of the, um, uh, of the uh, what do you call it, the um, customer service area. And I, I, I kept thinking to myself, this is out of place. This does not uh, look right. Something is strange here. And then uh, the terrorist attack happened in Moscow. And I was wondering, is this guy scouting out our Walmart? Is this a, a Middle Eastern guy planning on something, folks? I don't know. And uh, I might even go down to Walmart and talk to them about this because it, it, it was out of place. You know, when you go shopping, folks, um, you know, you get a buggy and you put groceries in it and you check out. You just don't go through a store with your video camera uh, taking videos and photos and texting solid for an hour. Uh, it just didn't look right. So, folks, we live in a, a, a scary world. We live in things that are going to happen. Uh, I do believe that uh, terrorist attacks will happen in America. But uh, we just got to be vigilant. We got to be ready. But we got to get the sin out of our life. You know, Christians, uh, we're not immune to sin. So many Christians are hooked on pornography, folks. They do it while their wife is in bed in another room. Uh, pornography is a big problem in the world, uh, even in the church. 
So, folks, we got to get our life straight. We got to sanctify our life before God. We got to get the sin out. We got to love our brother. We got to walk in love. We got to do good uh, to people. We got to forgive people. We can't be a racist. We can't hate people on the basis of their color or their race. You know, there's not going to be any mean, evil, wicked people in heaven, folks. I'm sorry, there's not. There's not going to be any racists in heaven. I don't care if you're white, you're black, you're Russian, you're Ukrainian. I don't care what color you are. If you hate another person or uh, a race because of their color, you're not going to heaven, folks. God's not going to let that happen. So you need to repent of that. You need to ask God to take that hate out of your heart. You know, there's so many black people that hate white people. There's this new movement called the, uh, I guess, the... Um, the uh, the Hebrew something Israelis uh, that they think all white people God's going to destroy them, folks. That's not true. John three sixteen says, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life." Folks, God came to the world. He came to the world to save sinners. We are all sinners. Black, white, yellow, red, Russian, Chinese. It doesn't matter what country, what language you speak. God came to be your Lord and Savior, and he sent his son physically to the earth. So, folks, let's walk in love. Jesus gave us two important commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Folks, that's what we're supposed to be doing as a Christian, not hating, not judging other people. You know, it's so tragic what's happening on our southern border. You know, what would Jesus do? Jesus uh, came to the poor. The poor people received him, but the rich people rejected him, the religious leaders. But there are so many hurting people coming across our border, uh, families that are just looking for a new life. And the way that we treat people, God will judge us. You know, there are also terrorists and bad people coming across our border. I realize that. But folks, are we to treat people like trash, like they don't? Uh, they're not worth anything because they have a brown skin and they look different, folks. We're supposed to take care of our neighbor. We're supposed to do what Jesus told us to do, take care of the widow, the orphan, the stranger. And I realize that our borders are unprotected, but folks, we can't go around just hating people because of their skin color, because God made every one of us, everyone, no matter what color you are, he loves us all and he wishes that all of us go to heaven. So God bless you. Thank you for watching our channel. Please share our videos out. Make sure you are subscribed. And if God leads you, please consider supporting our channel. We need your support more than ever to keep going. Uh, it, it just helps encourage us to keep doing these videos so that you will be informed and you will make the right decisions in your life to protect you and your family. So God bless you. Remember, Jesus Christ loves you. He's coming back soon. Don't be caught dead with